are you willing to put in the work? You know, recently with COVID and being at home, I decided to start playing chess, specifically playing chess online. And I discovered that they actually, they could give you a rating. It's called an ELO rating. It's named after some kind of mathematician and grandmaster. And it really doesn't stand for anything, but it just, it could actually qualitatively say like, you're this good out of everybody who plays online. And I, I actually wanted to get my ELO up. I wanted to get better at it. And so I think I started around six or 700 and I wanted to see, could I get to a 1200 uh, ELO rating, which again means nothing eternally, but it's just something that it was like a goal of mine. And so I wanted to, to just figure out what does it take to do that? Well, I started to play a lot more online and I started to lose and I started to learn things and it got hard. I, I was up, I was down. There's moments where I started to win a lot. And then I was like, man, I, I, how do I get better at this? This might be impossible for me. And I was actually, um, watching a grandmaster play on twitch actually somebody in grandmaster is just like the top title uh for you know somebody who plays chess and i remember somebody asked them in the chat said uh what age were you when you were like an 1800 elo and uh, the person said and this crushed me uh the grandmaster said well i was like nine or ten when i reached 1800 and i'm thinking i'm somebody who's in his like mid 30s <laughs> And I'm trying to, I'm like, that's like 600 points under what I'm trying to achieve. And it was really discouraging. But then I also realized that he had put in a lot of work. I mean, this is somebody who had spent his entire life, you know, probably 30 years of his life just playing chess. He had studied things. He, he knew patterns. He had probably played like, you know, tens of thousands of games and really had put in the work. And I'm somebody who's trying to accelerate it. I had played a lot, but I'm trying to cheapen that. I, I just want to get to it quicker. And I think about that a lot of times we, we see people at certain levels or doing certain things and we go, God, what, why am I not there? And, and I, and, but we don't think about the work that it took to get there. And I think about the story of Elijah and a very famous moment in, in, a, in a first Kings 18, where he is on this mountaintop with these false gods and they're having this battle of who can light this, like these altars. And, uh, you know, it's just Elijah on one side, there's this 400 false prophets of Baal on the other side. And, um, essentially, they have this moment and pretty much he says, can whoever lights this, these fires first essentially has the real God and the Baal, you know, prophets do all this work. Nothing happens. And then it comes to Elijah's turn and he actually pours a bunch of water on it. There's actually a trench underneath and he fills the trench up there. I mean, there's tons of water. It's drenched. It's not, you know, uh, you know, dry like, like the other one. He's, he's literally taunting these other gods. And in verse 38 in uh, 1 Kings 18, very famous moment it says then the fire of the lord fell and consumed the burnt the burnt offering and the wood and the stones and the dust and lit talk about how hot is this fire licked up the water that was in the trench and when all the people saw it they fell on their faces and said the lord he is god the lord he is god i mean talk about a cool moment how elijah was used by god I mean, he's standing there and all these people watching see that the God of Israel, the God of the Hebrew Bible is, is real and the Baal God is false and all the people fall and declare it. And we go, God, I want to be used like Elijah. But then we forget about all the work and all the things that Elijah had to go through to get to that moment. In chapter 17, the chapter before, we see that this is somebody who was thrust into a hundred years after King Solomon, the pinnacle of, of Israel. 100 years later, I mean, think about it like America, like whatever our pinnacle is or will be or, or was, think about being born 100 years after that. It's probably not a time you want to live. I and mean, it wasn't a good moment to, to, to live in Israel because of everything that was going on. Uh, he grew up in a rough place, uh, in, in a rough place called Gilead. It wasn't like a big city. It wasn't a place you probably want to live. Um, even he's called before King Ahab, which he, he wasn't a good king. His wife Jezebel had tried to kill a bunch of prophet, prophets previously. It wasn't the time you wanted to be in front of the king because King Ahab didn't like uh, the prophets of Israel. And he's told to give advice. And the advice he is asked to give give back is not good advice. He pretty much has said like, hey, King Ahab, sorry, uh, you're about to have a, a drought and all these issues. And so then he has to flee for his life. And so we, we see uh, this you know, first Kings 18 moment, we go, wow, I want to be in that moment. But we look at everything Elijah had been through and we go, do we actually want to put in that work? Do we want to go through all those issues? Because wherever there's success, there's a journey and, and there's, there's blood, there's sweat, there's tears. There's all this stuff that Elijah has been through and, and, and had been through. And I would encourage you read the story, you know, first Kings 17, even up through 19, because even after this 18 moment, 
he has to flee for his life again. There's all this stuff that he has to go through. And I want to encourage you, are you willing to put in the work? Are you willing to do you know, the, the hard stuff in order to be used by God? Because the cool thing is we get to be used by God. And I want to challenge you that God wants to use you in a big way, but you have to be willing to put in the work. And so a couple things that you can do to start putting in the work. Um, give God part of your day, every day, to, to talk with him and to read his word, the Bible. And I would encourage you, read, uh, start reading in the book of John or the book of Proverbs. There's really easy places to kind of start to, to build that habit of having a quiet time with God. Second, get into a small group. Spend life with other people to encourage you, to help you, to speak into your life. Um, we have small groups that meet in homes and online via Zoom that you can get into right now. And then thirdly, make those previous two things a priority, a part of who you are moving forward. Non-negotiables is who you are. You have daily time with God and you're part of a small group. Um, I did want to let you know that I did, after many months, I did reach my ELO of 1200 and I may have been completely by myself when I finally got to 1201 and I like, I did a like, a, yeah, like I got really excited because I'm a complete dork. But I put in the work, I have much more to go, but I'm praying that as you put in the work, that God shows you fruit of your work and that you do have your first Kings 18 big moment like Elijah did. I'm praying as you get your hands dirty.